everybody and welcome. This is Toby Yunus of the World Sand Project, and we've got a beautiful sample today from France. It should look really good under the microscope. Uh, I wanted to ask that before you leave today, make sure you like this video. YouTube likes it when you like our videos. So share it with your family, your friends, your neighbors, your business associates, and the entirety of your social network so that I can grow the channel. And finally, if you're not already a subscriber, this would be the ideal time to subscribe. So that way, oh, and ring the notifications bell. That way, when we start a live stream, you'll be immediately informed and in the know. Got a great sample for you today. So uh, what's exciting for me about this sample today is this was a sample that was collected by my youngest daughter. Her name is Toby Renee Eunice and her boyfriend, Francis, uh, when they were in France. Now, France, uh, Francis's family has property. Ugh, I can't remember if it's in France or Spain. They have a vineyard there. So every year for her birthday, uh, the two of them return, take a trip. And this year, the trip included France, Spain, and Morocco. They went to Marrakesh. So if you ever go to Morocco, please visit Marrakesh. Uh, anyway, I made her promise me that she would uh, collect a couple of sand samples uh, for me. And so what we're going to do in just a few minutes is we're going to give her a call. You know what? I need to check and make sure that she's on this phone as well. Toby Renee. Yeah, there she is. Okay. And uh, she promised me uh, to be home. She lives in the Washington metropolitan, Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. So I told her that we'd call and she could tell us uh, about her trip. All right. Uh, if you have any questions in the chat room, and uh, so one of the things, if you recall, last week I went kind of I didn't go off script. I just didn't notice you guys couldn't see uh, the screenshot. Um, and I went for 15 minutes before I realized it. So the best way to let me know that is to text a message to 202-815-1171. You'll see that number right down below me here. Uh, and that way I hear it buzz on the phone. Uh, and and I don't have to do it. And, and actually, if you have a question about the sample, same thing. Just uh, text a message to 202-815-1171. So let's take a look at uh, our photos today. I'm going to go to the window shot and uh, make sure we're there, and that's where we're supposed to be. All right, so this is uh, not a long trip. Now, they traveled from the East Coast uh, right around the Washington metropolitan area, which is right about here. That's the Chesapeake Bay in there. Uh, but from our little studio here in Bernalillo, I guess our, our million-dollar, no, it's a little tiny studio. It's uh, 12 by 12. It's uh, your average sized house bedroom is what it is. Anyway, they, we travel from Bernalillo all the way across to uh, Europe and France. Now, uh, what was interesting to me, of course, well, why am I not getting, let's see, I need to get, I need to, oh, you know what? It's because it's in edit mode. Hold on just a sec. Okay, out of edit mode. So we can go on to, how come I can't advance the screen here? What the? That's, uh, you guys can see that. Oh, I know why. Because I'm in a gypsy's kiss, and I can't be in a gypsy's kiss. I gotta log out of a gypsy's kiss and um, da -da 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 -da. go to World Sand Project. All right, there we go. That's better. So that's why it wouldn't let me do that. So we're gonna open that up, and there's the arrow. So we traveled all the way across the Atlantic to. Uh, Europe and France, and this particular location, uh, I thought when I first saw it, it's, uh, it reminded me of locations on the um, Atlantic coast or, or uh, on the coast uh, in the English Channel. This one is not. As you can see, it's along the Mediterranean. Here's the Italian boot. This is uh, Sicily. Uh, oh, that's Sicily. Um, uh, Sardinia, and right along here in this Bay, and I think we get to see what that bay is here in just a moment. So it's right on the northeast facing uh, shore of that bay. And uh, we're going to take a closer look at, at that when we open up the maps um, in France. That's the Mediterranean coast of France. So uh, this is uh, my daughter, Toby Renee, and her boyfriend, Francis. Uh, they both uh, they live in uh, the Washington metropolitan area. 
Toby is the only one of my daughters that isn't married, uh, and I think she kind of likes it that way because she belongs to a company that uh, whose offices, whose corporate headquarters is uh, is in Sweden, and she gets to travel all over the world for them. And I think she really likes that uh, world traveling thing. It's it's great for her. As a matter of fact, it's perfect for her. She's our little world uh, traveler. Francis's parents worked at one time for the International Monetary Fund, so he think I think he speaks five languages all together. French, Spanish, Portuguese, and a couple of others. Um, so they make a they make a perfect uh, pair. They're both very well traveled. So this is the location at which he collected the sand. We're going to take a look at that uh, in just a moment. And, it, and I don't know whether you noticed, it's called the uh, Plage de Saint Vincent, Saint Vincent uh, uh, in Colio, France. It's the uh, Saint the beach of St. Vincent in uh, Collier, France. So there she is taking out a little plastic bag and collecting it. Francis taking the photo. Uh, and she sent me some photos that they took while they were there. And I'm just going to go through them because it's a beautiful location. And then we'll give her a call. And then when we're done with the call, we'll take a look at the sample. So those beautiful little narrow French uh, streets. I've always said that if I, I wanted to retire someplace else than uh, the United States, it would be one of these little towns in France along the route of the uh, Tour de France, the big bicycle race every year, because they always show these little narrow streets, and I just love them. So as you can see, some uh, medieval castlery in the uh, background from the side uh, that they were shooting from. They're over by the, uh, on that uh, uh, St. Vincent's Beach, they're over by the lighthouse, and you'll see a couple of photos uh, in just a minute from that. That's the other d uh, direction. So just a beautiful, you know, cliffside uh, homes that are probably worth tens of millions right now. So that's uh, no, is that the that's the infamous lighthouse, and we're going to see a picture of that a little closer. This is the beach. This is uh, the uh, plage. Uh, they, I'm going to I'm just going to say it in English because I'll butcher the French. Uh, the uh, Saint Vincent, uh, the beach of Saint Vincent de Coulion. This is the name of the town, Coulion. And uh, so uh, the uh, city, uh, so since this is the most photo photographed and uh, painted uh, symbol in the city, they put a frame on it so that you could see what it looks like in your frame when you mount the, the uh, picture. I thought that was kind of neat. And uh, again, along the walkway... And a beautiful look. Now, she sent me a photo of some uh, taller mountains in the background, the French. Uh, well, I guess these would be the, down there, they would be the Pyrenees. So, uh, but I didn't post it. Uh, but it's got that Mediterranean look with the palm trees and things like that. Now, the disadvantage is that when she goes on her vacation, her annual birthday vacation, her, birth, her birthday is uh, in, um, in February. So it's still pretty chilly there. Uh, it's at about the same... Uh, it's this one I think was at 35 degrees north, so it's about the same as uh, New Mexico, right? A little, little bit different from New Mexico. Beautiful blue green waters along the Mediterranean, and those beautiful little houses. So let's do this. Let's uh, call her and talk with her just a little bit, and maybe we can get uh, maybe uh, Francis is there. They're uh, working from home right now, so uh, because both of their uh, businesses, he works for Marriott. And both of their businesses has put them on, you know, stay home and work. Hello. Hi, Toby Renee. Yes. It's Toby Michael. Hi, Dan. You're <laughs> you're on the air. <laughs> oh, hello, everybody. Uh, uh, so I just showed everyone your pictures, the pictures that we sent sent me. I haven't shown them the sample yet, but uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about this location in France, uh, called your Okay, um, so it is on the coast, the west coast of France, uh -huh. um, into the Mediterranean, mm -hmm. um, and it's actually about a 30-minute uh, drive from the Spanish border, mm -hmm. um, so it's pretty easy to get to from Spain, which is where we were staying at the time, mm -hmm. Um and you drive actually have a lot of different sceneries driving there because you have the mountains that were still snowy in February and then you pass all the vineyards and then all of a sudden you get to this like, cute little beach town um, and at the time it was actually a really nice day in February so there were a lot of people out and about and it's just lined with a bunch of restaurants and then you get to this beach area where kids were still actually going into the water at the time it oh was really in february mm. so yeah they were i mean going up to knee height but they right. were in their swimming trunks 
Um, and then we had the opportunity to just kind of walk around, eat a baguette, and um, tour the fort that's there, too. So I tried to explain. Uh, uh, Francis's family has property, and I never remember. Is it in France or Spain? It's in Spain. And so that's uh, where you guys go to visit. That's kind of your home base. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. And then we usually take little day trips from there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Will, uh, I'm going to save your the sample that you collected in Spain for uh, two weeks from now uh, because I don't, I don't, you know, I want to separate them by just a little bit. And okay. um, and uh, I mentioned that Francis speaks several languages, so it makes it real easy on you. Hello, did yep, I lose I'm you? I'm here. Uh, no, I'm here. I mentioned that Francis speaks several languages, European languages, and so it makes it real easy on you guys when you travel. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's the best when you, like, just cross. Well, he speaks Spanish, and then we cross over the border into France, and then he just switches on his French. So it's really convenient. So uh, I've always, traveling with him. Uh, when I talk about you, I will always refer to you as our little traveler uh, because you seem to enjoy it. Is that is that a good description? Oh, yeah. I think I go so crazy if I don't have, like, a trip on my horizon uh -huh. every time. And right now, specifically, <laughs> I'm yeah. going so crazy because... We had to cancel all of our trips. So, so you and you're working, you and Francis are both working from home. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, we're both in sales, but he is unable to sell. Uh, like he has to be face to face. So right. right now he's not even working from home. He's just home. Oh. I am working from home. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, I, you, you sent me pictures of the new addition to your family. Oh, yeah, we got a new puppy, so <laughs> traveling, my, we've already gotten our, uh, we have our babysitters lined up for when we have to do our long trips, which yeah. will probably be his mom or my mom. Yeah. And then, um, but yeah, he's a good little addition to the family. His name's Keeper. Mm, keeper, as in, as in? Goalkeeper. Goalkeeper. Just because we both play soccer, too, yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, uh, you sent a uh, beaut beautiful set of images. Thank you for that. The sample is great. Uh, it's very diverse, but it's very European in the sense that it has a lot of material that comes from those hills and the mountains behind it. So I don't see a lot of uh, what are referred to as biogenics, but it has a lot of diversity. And I don't know if I got the picture or not. I did find a piece of amber. And amber is oh. interesting because when it's in the water, it floats. And so when it, 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 if there's a location nearby in which some of that prehistoric amber has been collected, it ends up there. And there is a lot in the Mediterranean, especially around uh, the uh, Eastern European countries, the, the Baltic countries that are on the Mediterranean. They have a lot of amber that uh, washes up on the beaches. They go around collecting it, actually, and turning it wow. into things. So. Maybe you can well, get, what uh, I'm interested to see is uh, the, sam the other sample from Spain. I mean, they're probably an hour away from each other, yeah. um, but still the same coast. So I'm interested to see the differences between the two also. You will be surprised. Uh, we've, yeah. done, uh, we've done samples from uh, California that were uh, on the California coast one hour apart from one another, uh, one another driving time. And they looked, they were completely different samples completely yeah. different. And it really depends on uh, the su surrounding mountains and what kind of minerals they contain uh, and what kind of rocks they produce and whether or not they were produced as a result of tectonic action or, uh, or volcanic action. So yeah, every one of them has their own little personality. The, the, I haven't, uh, your sample number 34 that we've looked at, and I haven't seen two that you could say looked the same, you know. Okay. They, they all each have their different little personalities. And uh, this one, like I said, is uh, rocks and minerals, not a lot of what are called biogenics. Biogenics are what are produced by uh, sea organisms, shells. And although I did find some shell material in it, or uh, it didn't look like there was a lot of coral in the area. So there was not much uh, in the way of coral in the sand, too. So, hmm. but... Yeah. Well, I also... Um We'll have a little secret for you, too, because we had gathered a sample in Mallorca, and uh, I had put it in a water bottle, and when we left, we were like, 
oh, where did we put that water bottle? And we're like, well, maybe the maid just cleaned it up. So we won't tell dad that we yeah, <laughs> that you collected, collected something. <laughs> but when we were unpacking, I found the water bottle in my suitcase when we got back. And I was like, oh, I should probably send this one to him too. So I do have an outstanding sample from Mallorca as well. I, I, that'd be great. The sooner the better as usual. And it's, uh, it's in the queue. I'm putting these uh, in the queue as they arrive. So that sample is probably five or six weeks out. Uh, okay. But your Spanish sample is next uh, next week. Now I do offer, uh, and you'll have to look at the screen. Are you are you in front of a computer by any chance? No, but I can be in a sec. Well, if you, if you do, can did, did you have me? Had you logged into the show already? No, not yet. Okay, so here's I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to full screen for just a second, and what okay. I'm gonna show you is whoever has sent us a sample of sand. I offer them the choice of one of two items. One is a photograph of the sample under the microscope, a four by six dye sublimation print, matted and framed, or a pendant. It's a little glass, what I call a flame pendant, oh. and uh, and it contains the pendant. Uh, uh, the glass pendant contains a sample of the sand inside of it. Okay. So you have a choice of one or the other of those, and then the other one I will give away. Okay. Oh, I think I like the image a lot. Yeah. But let's see the pendant. I'll wait for the pendant. Okay. Well, uh, uh, <laughs> go to the computer, and, and in I'm, this I'm case... I'm in front of it. Okay. Are you logged into the show? Yep, I'm on it. Okay. Make sure that the audio is off. Now, there's about a 17-second delay between the time I actually show this and the time you can see it. And of course, it's just, it's not that great a shot. So oh, the pendant's really cute too. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, it's got, and it's decisions. got a little, um, I don't know what they call these things, like a little charm on it. And the charm mm -hmm. has the initials of the World Sand Project. Uh, let me see. That are stamped on it. And then in this case, well, I, I, ha I picked, a, it also has a, a um, crystal, a Swarovski crystal in it. And I picked the peridot looking one because I know you have, a, you, you know, it matches your eyes. Yeah. So, so pendant oh. or photo, and the reason there's only one is because you can't, you may not be able to see this, but this is one of one. Whoever gets the photo, that's the only one that's ever produced. Well, what do the people like more if we were to give away the other option? It, 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 they, it doesn't make any difference. Whoever, uh, whoever uh, uh, picks, you know, whoever gets it, they're usually happy with what they get. We get photographs of people having put the pendant on. As a matter of fact, uh, one of our uh, recent, uh, the, the uh, young woman that sent us the sample from Diamond Beach in Iceland, she's in the room and she says, she's wearing my black, I'm wearing my black sand pendant right now. Yeah, so, I see that. But, uh, okay, well, I'll take the picture on this one because is this going to be an option where we have the Spanish sample too? Because Yeah, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> when you do the Spanish sample, you'll get the same option, photograph or pendant. So you could end up choosing the pendant in that case. Yeah, because right. I like that idea because I think uh, Francis's mom, that beach in Spain means a lot to her. So I think that I could give her the pendant. Oh, that's very thoughtful of you. That would be good. Yeah. Okay, I will put the image in the mail this weekend. And you'll have it early, mid next week. So okay, it's a beautiful right picture. It shows a lot of the diversity. It looks really cool. Yeah, yeah. And and in just a minute, once I hang up with you, we're going to show you some of the pictures that I made from it. And then we're going to actually look at the uh, uh, the sample under the microscope. Okay? Okay. Thank Sounds you for good. this. Thank you guys for collecting the sample. And thank you for uh, letting me call you at this uh, time. Not that you'd be doing anything else except working since you're home. Well, it's 5 p.m. right now. So yeah, yeah. It's, All right. it's closing down the computer time. All right, baby doll. Thank you. Okay. Uh, give Francis a hug for me, and I love you. I love you, too. Bye-bye. Bye. So that was my uh, daughter, Toby Renee. Uh, and that means next week uh, we'll be giving away this sand pendant from, uh, uh, let me see if I can say this, uh, Plage de Saint-Vincent in Collioure, de Collioure, in Collier, France. So that's what we'll be giving away. In order to have a chance at winning this pendant, you have to make a comment in the description box of this video once it is posted to YouTube. Okay, I'll remind you of that uh, in the show. And then again, I'll remind you uh, next week. So uh, Toby selected the picture. That means we have the pendant as a giveaway. All right, so let me just make a note of that. WSP. 
and this is uh, 2020.03.18, and uh, pendant goes to Toby. Now, what does that mean? What's the giveaway for today? That would have been, oh, you know what? I don't think I made a print from last week. Hmm. All right. Well, let's cross that since you guys are here and since you deserve it. Um, oh, I can't do that. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to give this pendant away at the end of the show. In order to qualify for it, go to last Wednesday's show. Uh, the, well, that would be uh, today's the 18th. So that would be the 11th. Go to last Wednesday's show and make a comment, and I'll select the winner from there of the pendant, okay? Because I know how to do that. That's, that's why, because I did that last week. So Toby wanted the photo, and somebody else will get the pendant. All right, we'll give that away at the end of the show. If I forget, uh, which is possible, uh, just text me at 202-815-1171 and remind me to do the giveaway. So pendant giveaway today, okay? From this beach. Here, I'm going to go back to the... Um, so you can see it. It is Royal Sand Project Sample 34, Plage, which is beach in Spanish, Saint-Vincent de Collier in Collier, France. Saint, the uh, Saint Vincent of Collier's Beach in Collier, France. All right? So let's go back to the pictures. And, um, oh, you couldn't see that. Dang, damn it. Okay, window shot. All right. So World Sand Project Sample 34, Plage, Saint-Vincent, saint Vincent de Collier, Collier France, and I'm probably butchering that. It's Saint Vincent de Collier of, of Collier Beach uh, in Collier France, all right? And uh, let's go down and take a look at the sample. So here it is in the, the little sample bottle. It's got a whitish tint to it, a little bit of uh, white, but uh, tan because some of those uh, brown colors are mixed into it. Uh, I'd call this coarse sand, and I would call it sub-angular. It isn't very refined. Uh, that's primarily because those hills, as you saw, were right behind, uh, right behind um, the city. So a lot of this sand probably just came in from there. And there wasn't a lot of biogenics. There was some shells, but I didn't see a lot of uh, coral. The interesting thing about the magnetite is there was some pretty good sized magnetite pieces in there. And you can tell they have that iron. The rust actually uh, is from the iron that's in them. So it's, it's uh, 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 f ferrous, ferrous oxide, right? Uh, and that's what gives it that m magnetic uh, uh, capability. One of the larger ones, actually, when I put the, uh, I use a little, uh, whiteboard magnet, and I just plugged it in, and they all stuck to the side of the plastic. That's how strong the magnetic uh, force was in each one of these little tiny objects. So this is the large overview, uh, the wide angle shot, and you can see it's mostly rocks. There are uh, an occasional shell in there, but see this material right there? That to me, under the microscope, looks like amber. See the little bubbles and things like that? And amber is the material uh, that it's basically fossilized uh, sap, tree sap. Uh, and it fossilized, it hardens, fossilized, well, I don't know if you could call it fossilized. It hardens. And then, and then it, it uh, ends up in the sea. And there's a lot of these little yellow pieces. If you look at them, they're amber-colored yellow pieces here and here and down here uh, that I saw. So uh, considering I've seen them against uh, on other Mediterranean shores, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess that's what it was. That's a close-up uh, of one of them. So and you can see it's got that little bubbly look to it. Uh, and the, the weird thing about it is that it floats in, in water. Amber doesn't sink, even though it feels like it should. It floats in water, so it's always washing up uh, on uh, seashores. And um, the um, Shelley sells seashells at the seashore uh, along the Baltic be beaches, along the, the Mediterranean beaches along the Baltic countries. Uh, you can always see a lot of amber and, and good chunks, and they collect it. There are people who collect it as a living, and then they use it in jewelry and pendants and uh, things like that. So there, here's one of the small biogenics that is seashell material right here. But again, there's one of those bubbly amber pieces, and then uh, a lot of rock material, and then magnetite right here. That's the magnetite, that dark color with the reddish uh, tint to it. And then a little bit of quartz, which would make sense from the mount coming from the mountains behind uh, a lot of the activity. Here's uh, a little bit of more of the uh, seashell material. 
And this piece right here, see that right there as it goes over here? That's my first piece. That's the first piece of plastic that I've seen in any of my samples. And I was, uh, there was a woman who wrote me about, I don't know, three, four, maybe five weeks ago. And she asked, had I seen any plastic material in my samples because it's so prominent uh, in, uh, in the seas nowadays. I hadn't seen it until today. And you can just tell by the shape and what it goes into. That's a piece of microplastic the same size as a grain of sand, and it made it into the sample. So that's an indication that uh, they're experiencing some of this on the, uh, the Mediterranean shores as well as, um, uh, as uh, we are. You'll see this in the California samples occasionally. A lot of white but non-translucent quartz, almost as much. But you can see these are not conglomerates, but they are rocks. Eventually, they'll break down into their respective minerals. This, again, I, didn't, I couldn't tell whether this one is quartz or amber. To me, this one looks like quartz. The amber has a little bubbly look to it. Let me see if I can find another one. So there was one of the uh, diamond-like uh, quartz crystals, you know, the translucent, very clear uh, translucent one with the conchoidal fractures. Uh, but the rest pretty much are rocks, very little biogenic material, either seashells. Uh, no, I didn't see any, uh, any cor I'm, I'm sorry, any uh, coral at all where there was not. There was one of the most obvious pieces of magnetite. You can see it has that shiny polish to it from the iron in it. And then the red material is uh, the ferric uh, oxide rusting. So uh, that was one of the pieces that actually uh, connected to, to the magnet. Here's that one small piece of shell. I thought I had another one. There was this one, but I thought I had a blue one. Or, or maybe this is the blue one because it has that blue on the tip when it flipped over. And I'm not sure what that comes from. That's right. So when it flipped over, it had a kind of blue color to it. So that's the biogenic material, you know, that created by a, a creature that was using it for uh, their own shell at some point. A little bit more when you see something like that where it's that kind of uh, flat white color with holes in it. That means uh, it was biogenic. It is biogenic, and that it was created, made from calcium uh, carbonate, and produced by a sea creature. So this was a nice video. This is the one, by the way, Toby. Since you decided on that one, this is the one that I made the photograph from, and it had a lot of diversity in it. So you'll see quartz, you'll see rock. This one here is magnetite, although it has a little blue tint to it in this case. And then it's got some biogenic material here, some seashell material here, and. And I think that is some of the amber. So all the diversity that I could find in this one uh, sample is pretty much represented in this photograph. And that's the one that I made the print of. So here's a little bit. See these right here? That to me looks very amber looking uh, just because it's got little bubbles in it. You know, quartz doesn't do that. Quartz doesn't bubble up, uh, if you will, like that. Quartz has that fractured look like this one right down here. So I thought it was a very good, very diverse sample right here. A little bit of mica uh, mixed in uh, with uh, the rocks, a little bit of quartz up here, a little bit of the lighter uh, color, you know, less translucent quartz. Uh, so it was mostly rocky with, and that's a photo after I pushed all the magnetite off the magnet, uh, it ended up in one small area in the sample one very small sample, so I just I shot that. That was a lot of the magnetite that you saw uh, attracted uh, to the magnet. So let's uh, switch over to the maps real quick. And uh, these links, by the way, are in the description box below. Oops. So we want to go to maps so we can see the area. WSP0034 slash maps. Not slash, but maps. And that'll take us to... The location, this is the exact location. That spot right there, so one of the photos that uh, I showed you with uh, uh, Toby picking up the sand, uh, actually, she's probably standing right out here picking up the sand. That was where Francis took the photo from, which is the coordinates that I got. Uh, but there's that, um, the lighthouse, the, the chapel in the background, the lighthouse that's so uh, photogenic. Let me see if I've got some... I could do a 3D here someplace. Oh, yeah, look at that. All kinds of 3D stuff here. So let's get that, and we can swing it around, take a look at the lighthouse off in the distance right there. So that is the same beach that uh, from which uh, Toby collected the sand, and it looked like she was standing further down here. Oh, there's the lighthouse. 
So uh, she was standing further uh, down here. So a uh, good-looking little location. I thought it was kind of neat. Uh, boats for going out and rowing in the, in the bay. Uh, the bay on different days looks calmer uh, than it does here. That looks like a little windier day. This was shot in, uh, in May of 2016. So, uh, But a nice little area, beautiful little town on uh, the... Uh, Toby called it the West Coast, which I guess is the west, best way to describe it. Uh, but it's on the Mediterranean of uh, France. So this is the Mediterranean. Those are shipping lanes right there. So a uh, beautiful little area. I would love to go visit myself. Um, and they have those little, you can see they have just like she said, a bunch of little restaurants along the street there. There's the uh, beach, St. Vincent, but this is a Couleur beach. And I think that's the lighthouse that, that uh, we were talking about. Let me see if I can get another little guy here on this side. Let's see. Oh, there's some. There's a boaty one. Let's see what happens in the boat. So somebody shot this from a, a boat, it looks like. Not very... Yeah, there's... Oh, from the... Uh, so there is a photograph of uh, that first photograph that we saw of... Uh, of um, uh, Francis and Toby was shot from this location right here, this walkway right there. And there's our lighthouse. And there's the beach from which he collected the sample. And then there's the uh, chapelle, the chapel of um, Saint, Saint Vincent de, de Collier. So I'm, again, I'm not going to, my, my French is okay, not that good. And so if there's anybody in there that speaks it better, can say that. All right. So uh, beautiful area. Uh, and it would be a great place to go visit, and I'm sure that Toby would uh, and should recommend it. Now, when she was talking about where they come from, let me see if I can find that on here. So the, the border is, is that the border right there? Yeah. So there's the border right there. So you can drive along the coast, uh, and, uh, and I haven't uh, taken a look. I haven't mapped out her other sample, but I have a feeling it's right along here because this is Spain here. This is France here. So they just cross over. These are the uh, Pyrenees uh, right there. So a lot of that material comes from these mountains. Those are tectonic, not, vol uh, not volcanic. Is that right, the Pyrenees? Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm a big fan of the Tour de France, uh, and so uh, every year... I watch it, and I watch all these very cool locations that they are uh, that they are um, shooting in. And they, of course, they travel all over France. And uh, and uh, I just say every time I see it, I say to myself, "That's where I'm going to move. I'm going to move there and just retire there." So, all right, let's. I uh, got a few more minutes here. Let's take a look at the sample itself. I'm going to close these windows and that one. And uh, that's what the sample looks like under the microscope. So that's kind of the wide angle look. And you can see uh, right there, what I've started doing is making sure that the sample I use for processing is this one. That's that, uh, that's that um, seashell that you saw earlier. We'll zoom in on it for a little bit better look here in just a second. Get that one in focus first. And just kind of take a look around. I'm just going to let you wander around with this one. Uh, and you can see the dark mafic colors uh, from uh, the rocks. There is quartz, which we would expect to see on something that was the result of the, um, uh, you know, uh, mountains behind it. Uh, we don't see, you know, like we see in a Hawaiian sample, we saw a lot of, in, in the Hawaii samples, we saw a lot of biogenic material, whether it's shell material or um, what I like to call fish poop. I guess I shouldn't call it that, but but it's uh, the uh, coral that's been processed by the parrotfish. So let's see. I didn't see anything in the way of fossils, but that doesn't surprise me. These mountain ranges here are older than some of our mountain ranges here in the United States. The, the mountain ranges there are older than uh, the mountain ranges in the United States. But again, right there, you'll see... There's some shell material right there. So it's got a, you know, good, not a bad concentration of it, but that's just rock. And these are all sand grain size, so they fit through uh, the sieve, uh, the two millimeter sieve, and didn't make it through the one millimeter sieve. So uh, there's some place between one millimeter and two millimeters uh, in size. Let's zoom in. And, and again, since this is tends to be a larger sample, you can't zoom in too far, otherwise you just lose everything. So there we are with some shell material. 
and uh, perhaps because of all those little holes, it could have belonged to a foram, but I'm not going to say it is. There's quartz rock material, and then right next to it is just your, you know, traditional rock that's come comes from right outside those mountains, still has a lot of the minerals inside of it. Those are all the different colors are the different mil minerals re reacting with both uh, oxygen and um, uh, the uh, salt in the water. So uh, a good good sample. That right there, the dark one, it looks blue. It's not. It's black. It's because of the LED that I use. So that is one of the magnet pieces of magnetite. And behind it, kind of a colorful uh, a quartz piece with a little bit of range in it. So the magnetite's going to look blue under the uh, microscope. Let's see what else we got. So that looks like a rock with just a little tiny piece of pyrite in it. I can't imagine it's gold. Oh no, you know what? That's shell material. See that? The pink colored one? That's shell material. Right there, you can just tell because uh, of the uh, variety of colors. I didn't see any olivine like we do in the samples that we get. There's more magnetite, so that's some of that, that very magnetic material. And then just a lot of colorful rocks. You'll, you'll see them in there next to the very nicely fractured quartz. So that, that's a good example of rock, right? And then right next to it, quartz. Might be able to zoom into that rock a little. It looks like it has a, like some gems in the middle there. Yeah, see? So there's some little tiny in that, that, that rock right there, which again is a, a grain of sand. If you look at this area right here, right? As it, that's, so that's a face. It looks like it's uh, concave. And so that part of the rock was chipped off. And inside of that chipped off rock, there were some gems forming from, uh, from geologic action, right? They form from uh, chemistry is what's happening. And then they harden. Uh, but right there, you can tell uh, some, some gems, some, uh, some garnets probably, because they're the most common, were forming inside of that rock before it broke off and uh, was uh, washed into the water. And then the water, of course, trans transports it around and, and smooths it out a little bit further. But uh, I do want you to note that a lot of this material is very angular. Uh, uh, and the angularity indicates that it's very young material for the most part. There, it's, there we call sub sub-rounded. It isn't anywhere near as rounded as we would imagine it to be. So that's that biogenic. So this is the stuff here. See, it doesn't fracture. It just has the little bubbles in it. To me, that doesn't look like quartz. That looks more like amber. And the closer I get to it, it doesn't behave like quartz either. So let me, uh, let me I'm gonna zoom back out so we can, just a little bit more so that we can get a better look at the surroundings just to see what it uh, looks like. So on the whole, I would call this a pretty outstanding sample for the area. We haven't seen anything from the Mediterranean prior to this time. So I think Toby was wise in selecting uh, this particular location. And I'm looking forward to seeing the sample uh, that she sent us from Spain. So, and we'll see that next Wednesday. So we'll take a, a look next Wednesday. I think that was my partner just walking in. Let me say hi. Hey partner, is that you or uh, Robber? Uh, would you do me a favor and uh, preheat the oven to 370? Thank you. We're gonna start thinking about dinner uh, because we're rushed on on uh, Wednesdays and Fridays as we go from uh, one show to the next. So pretty good looking sample. I was really happy with it and I'm glad that uh, she and Francis took the time to collect this really good looking sample. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to give you one more minute to go to um, last Wednesday's show. That is the show of uh, Wednesday, March 11th, and we'll uh, give away this pendant. Uh, and I'll send that out this weekend. Toby wanted the picture, so we'll, uh, we'll give away the uh, pendant today. All right? So you got a, about a minute before I go do that. Let me see. Um, Corey says, I'm sure it's mostly an educated guess short of physical testing. If you want to ask Toby, 
be sure to the yeah send your questions to uh, the World Sand Project at gmail.com and I will get to them and address them in uh, future shows. <laughs> Toby's making dinner. Uh, no, I'm doing uh, I'm doing a pork loin roast. And and uh, yeah, that's why I need the oven. We don't usually do oven work. We usually do um, we usually do um, what you call it. Uh, Stovetop work. Okay, so let's go back to last week's show. Go to the World Sand Project and go to the live dashboard. Okay, go make a comment on last Wednesday's show if you want a chance at winning this pendant, the beautiful pendant from the St. Vincent, um, uh, St. Vincent of Colliers Beach in Colliers, French. I don't know if you can see. Uh, let me let me open up the picture real quick. So let me show it. Go make a comment on last Wednesday's show. And uh, Toby, Toby's eyes are kind of olive green. So whenever I've given her jewelry, I, uh, I, not always. I just gave her an amethyst, but I like giving her uh, peridot because it it goes with her eyes. So this has the peridot rhinestone in the um, charm. I don't know what else to call it. I don't know if you can even see it. So see right there under worlds where it had the letters. So it has a peridot uh, crystal in it. So let's give that away. And to do that, we're going to go to, let's go to window shot and go to video manager. As you see me in there. And we're going to go to live programming. And we're going to go to, let's see, what was that? Is that March 11th? Okay, so here's the one, March 11th. It's the one from, where was that? Oh, Shellen, Lake Shellen, Shellen Lake, Shellan, Shellan Lake. Uh, so uh, let me see how many, wow, there's only 12 comments, so uh, good chance of winning. And I think I'm going to try and give up, I'm going to give up if you want before you you get to win again because I can't keep track of how many times I've done it. So we're going to copy that link in there and we're going to go to commentpicker.com. So if you've made a comment on that program, we're going to go to YouTube tools, random comment picker, put the link in there. How many comments are there? 12 individual comments. So a good chance of winning here, guys. And it is The Dancer. Wow, what are the odds? I've never heard that. That's a new one. Okay, The Dancer, if you're listening right now or watching right now, let me go back to full frame. Uh, text me your shipping address to 202-815-1171. Uh, if I don't hear from you by next Wednesday, uh, I will re-give away the pendant, okay? Okay. And uh, Friday's show, I haven't decided, but next Wednesday, I will be doing uh, Toby's, um, Toby Renee's um, other sample, the one from Spain. And she said she wants the pendant from that to give to her mother-in-law because she's from that area. So, um, so the pendant, let me, I better write this down, the dancer. So the dancer, you're the winner of the pendant today. Text me your uh, shipping address to 202 815-1171. I'm going to go through the room and let's see if there's anybody that has any questions. I think we're okay. So yeah, Toby, uh, Toby Renee, isn't, was Toby in the room? Let me see. Yeah, there she is. So when you see Toby Eunice, that is Toby Renee uh, Eunice. So um, she was in the room. So she's my uh, youngest daughter. Uh, I coached her for I don't know how many years, from the time five until 15, 16, 17, I don't know. Um, but uh, but I always feel like she's the one. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, she's the uh, executor on my will. That's how much I trust her. Uh, but she's a traveler and and likes it. And I'm not I'm not going to say anything uh, because I think everybody should get as much traveling in their life as they possibly can. That's part of the fun of life. All right, uh, for you all, uh, we will see you at 4 o'clock on the softer side. We have a great show planned for you on the softer side. Tonight at 7 o'clock on A Gypsy's Kiss. Then again on Friday, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, and 7 o'clock. 
uh, World Sand Project, the softer side of Gypsy's Kiss, Saturday, Saturday Night Church of the Search. And don't forget on Mondays, we have a new program, 7 o'clock, called COVID Conversations with Dr. Coffee Brown. Dr. Uh, Brown is uh, part of the, uh, he's a, he teaches at the University of New Mexico, and he's the director of the Emer emergency, emergency Medical Practices uh, Department. And so uh, you can call up, call in, and ask all your questions about... Um, the, uh, the virus, uh, because we're taking this very seriously. Okay, so uh, we will see you at uh, 4 o'clock on the softer side if you join us then. Thanks for joining me today. I truly appreciate it. Congratulations to the dancer. Thank you, Toby Renee, for thank you and Francis for sending in that beautiful sample. And we look forward to processing the uh, Spanish sample next week. All right? You guys have a good day. And stay healthy. Distancing, social distancing. Uh, the only way we're going to beat this is if each of us does our own uh, uh, share in uh, fighting this disease, and that pretty much just keeping yourself healthy and keeping yourself safe, okay? Love you guys.